Hello, and welcome to the Nursing Experts Translating the Evidence module about evidence-based public health nursing practice. In this module, we will be examining the role of evidence-based public health nursing. Evidence-based practice seems to be a hot topic in today's healthcare environment. As we will be discussing in this module, we will learn about the significance of evidence-based practice and we will talk about the seven steps of evidence-based public health practice. The Public Health Accreditation Board is the organization that oversees the accreditation of public health departments. It lists evidence-based practices as one of their standards. In this example, standards are the required level of achievement that a health department is expected to meet. It is interesting to note that one of the expectations is that health departments are to identify and use the best available evidence for making informed public health practice decisions. In addition, another standard is to promote understanding and use of the current body of research, its results, evaluation, and evidence-based practices with appropriate audiences. Evidence-based practice helps us answer questions to our nursing practice such as, how do we know we are doing the right thing? And especially in these hard economic times, evidence-based practice helps us to make those tough decisions and give us the confidence to make the right choice. Evidence-based public health nursing practice looks at research and also takes into consideration the following questions, such as what has been done, how did it work, and how can I use that information to help my client or population. Bronson describes evidence as the available body of facts or information indicating whether a belief or proposition is true or valid. Bronson continues to state that evidence is often limited for many public health interventions, yet approaches should be based on the best possible science, be multidisciplinary, and center on sound planning and evaluation methods. There are several key components of evidence-based public health practice. One component is making decisions using the best available peer-reviewed evidence or searching the literature. You will learn about this in another module. Another key component is using data and information systems systematically, applying programming and planning frameworks, engaging the community in assessment and decision making. This is also known as community-based participatory research. Another component is conducting a sound evaluation and disseminating what is learned to key stakeholders and decision makers. The goal of evidence-based public health is to incorporate scientific evidence in planning and implementing programs, developing policies, and evaluating progress. Ideally, we want to combine information on evidence-based interventions from peer-reviewed literature with the realities of the real-world environment. Here is a flowchart that displays the bringing together of the professional skills, knowledge, and instinct with the knowledge of client preferences, such as their values and beliefs, to determine the best evidence for us to make a professional decision. As a public health nurse and other public health disciplines, you have the professional skills, knowledge, and that gut instinct to do what is best for the population that you work with on a daily basis. It is also important to consider the client preferences because an intervention that may be acceptable in a liberal environment may be rejected in a conservative environment. Evidence-based public health has many benefits. One is access, access to higher quality information on what works, a higher likelihood of successful programs and policies being implemented, greater workforce productivity, and more efficient use of public and private resources. In summary, um, the benefits of applying evidence-based public health results in more effective programming, better policies, improved decision-making, and better chance at funding, and also sustaining that funding and that program. This is an image from Bronson. It represents how decisions are made in planning programs, developing interventions, and evaluating program outcomes. If you notice, the circle in the middle is the decision that we make. The top circle 
which is best available research evidence, represents the information that you find while conducting a literature review, or it's also your peer-reviewed literature. The bottom left circle, which is population characteristics, needs, values, and preferences, represents the values of the population. For example, an intervention that may have worked in a rural setting may not be appropriate for an urban setting. And the bottom right circle represents resources including practitioner expertise. And I refer to this as your gut instinct. Barriers to implementing evidence-based public health includes your political environment. An Institute of Medicine article f determined that decisions ma decision making in public health is often driven by crises, hot issues, and concerns for organized interest groups. A lack of knowledge may cause you to make an uneducated decision. Another barrier to implementing evidence-based public health are deficits in relevant and timely research, a deficit in information system, deficits in resources and leaderships, and also the required competencies. Finally, here is the graphic from Bronson that displays the complete seven-stage process of evidence-based public health. If we notice that number one is the community assessment. This is where you'll gather the information on your population. A community assessment may be targeted to a specific population, the general population. In addition to your community assessment, you want to identify the setting and the issue. Number two is quantifying the issue. Three is to develop a concise statement of the issue, or here we will learn to ask that compelling question. Number four is determining what is known through the scientific literature or this is finding the evidence, which includes searching the literature, appraising the evidence and the strength of that evidence or the literature, select the best evidence, and link that evidence with experience and client values and preferences. Number five, developing and prioritizing program and policy operations. Number six, implement the program. And number seven, monitor implementation of the program and evaluate the results. Now that we've learned about the seven steps of the evidence-based public health process, let's begin to apply what we have learned. The first step is to identify the problem. We want to identify the problem, identify the main issue, and identify the setting, the population, in the issue. Here's an example from a hypothetical community. This community has a problem with persistent cervical infection with certain types of HPV and we know that HPV is the single most important risk factor for cervical cancer. In this community we have many preteens and teenagers and young adults that are at risk for HPV infection. And there are two types of vaccines that are available that prevent certain types of HPV that causes the cancer. And not many of the preteens or teenagers are receiving this vaccine. So now let's stop and think about this community. After we have looked at the population, the issue, and setting of our HPV or STD problem, what outcome would you like to achieve? Hmm. Well, there may be multiple outcomes. One may be to increase HPV immunizations among the preteen and adult population. Another outcome may be to increase education about safe sex practices. The second question to reflect on is, from your current knowledge base, what steps might you suggest to reach that goal? An example may be that your community assessment and professional instincts suggest that teenagers and young adults are always on their cell phones. So perhaps you would recommend reaching your goal of increasing HPV immunizations by educating teens through social media or texting. The second step is to quantify the issue. In this community, we found that the overall prevalence of HPV was 23%. The majority of the cases were found in STD clinics with family planning clinics as a close second. 
and consistent with literature, the highest prevalence age group was 14 to 19 year olds. And the local health department also reports little use of the vaccine. In the real world situation, you may be faced with multiple issues with multiple sources of data. If that is the situation, then you need to pull out the most important pieces that are relevant for the problem. You may need to ask yourself, hmm, after reviewing the data, what is the most important thing that you identified? Up to this point, we have addressed steps one and two of the evidence-based public health process. Step number three is to develop a concise statement of the issue. Step three is where you will clearly state your public health issue and we will learn to do this in a PICO format. Thank you for listening to this module about evidence-based public health. I encourage you to continue on with the next module, which is about developing a question. A focused question will help you when it's time to search the literature. Thank you.